Greetings, gamer guys and gals. Welcome to part 11 of my Let's Play Fire Emblem 5 Thracia 776. We've gotten by several per precarious uh, enemy phases here, and I think it's time that we just go ahead and move up our units as far as we possibly can. Ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna put you here. She's even more skilled than I'd hoped. How delightful. Here, a reward befitting a magnificent performer. What are you scheming? <laughs> Bring the girl out. M -m Marita? Marita, Marita. Oh, you're safe after all. I can't I can't tell you how worried I Little Nan, don't move a muscle. Huh? Marita, talk to me. K kill. What? Kill. 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 With this sword, all of you, all of you, kill all of you. Marita, you? Mother and daughter reunited at last. Tell me, is she all that you remembered, Avil? <laughs> what have you done to my Marita? Me? I didn't do anything, quite the contrary. She was trying to escape, so I gave her that sword to grant her a fighting chance. It's an exceptional blade, straight from the treasure vault inside this very castle. The Shadow Sword, I believe it's called. The Shadow Sword? A cursed blade? You trying to turn my Marita into one of your damned pit fighters with your little gift? My gift is cursed, you say? Well, this is the first time I'm hearing of it. I'll rip that lying tongue right out of your mouth. How how dare you do this to Mar Amusing as your threats are, shouldn't you be worrying about yourself right now? The Shadow Sword bears incredible power. An exceptional gift for an exceptional woman. <laughs> Radric. Marita, look at me. Snap out of it. And that right there is one of many little scenes that we have to go through in this. Um, I actually kind of wish my units were a little bit closer than they are, uh, honestly. They're not close enough, if I'm, being, if I'm being real. Especially because now we have to deal with Marita here, who is... Not really a threat to Avel, but we don't really want to kill her with Avel. And as you can see, Avel still has Miracle Plus. So Avel can't die in this chapter. The only reason why I'm healing her is simply out of out of necessity to get experience points on Nana. As well as something very interesting here. If she does get to a low enough uh, hit points, they will just utterly capture her. That's why you also can't just take her sword off of her. Can't do anything of the, that sort, any like funny business. I kind of wish they gave Avel a, a weaker weapon. Um, but part of the reason why they gave her the iron sword, uh, iron blade, is because that's what she's known for wielding. I mean, it's been what she's been wielding this entire game besides the flame sword. Um, but besides that, it also has terrible hit. Um, so I'm thinking that that's part of the reason why that is. And it's a balancing act. You want to do your best to not KO these guys. Unfortunately, she's most likely KOing this pit fighter. Yeah, so she decided she's definitely KOing that pit fighter. She's not getting much experience points from these guys because even though they are pre-promoted, you gain more experience points based on level than you do pre-promotion. So they're very low level on purpose so that Avel won't get a lot of experience points. She won't like snowball right here because she could technically snowball if they were all really high level. And she's getting pretty decently hit. Uh, it's super bad. It's, it's crazy bad that she KO'd two of those pit fighters right there. So that means that soon and very soon, we're going to be dealing with several other potential pit fighters. Two more to be exact. 
I don't think they come one, both at the same turn. I think it's one per turn. So we still don't have to worry about that necessarily. But Marita here is wildly strong. She would probably be a bigger threat than your than most of these pit fighters just because of how powerful the a preferential weapon of the Shadow Sword is. It is a 11 might, 20 crit, 1 range, 70 hit, brave sword that gives her Nihil. Nihil is an interesting skill. It negates all enemy combat related skills for, ex, except for Nihil itself. She also has Luna, which is a skill percentage chance for an attack to ignore enemies' defense. So she has a Vigor Star as well. So she just can outright deny your defense and hit you multiple times. So it's kind of a bit wild on that on that uh, por portion, I, I should say. So one thing that is kind of very unfortunate with this is that I am going to have to... Hmm... Okay, so we can move there. I am going to have to take another turn before we can even open up this door. Because if we opened it right now, we would have a very serious problem on our hands. We can put Karen in the range of one of these guys, hopefully do a bit of damage. Okay, so he has 5 defense and 26 HP. Um, so with the Steel Sword, she's going to do 7 damage times 2. It's not going to be great, but it'll be something, I suppose. And we are going to just leave Leaf right there. And heal up Abel. Now, if I'm wrong, and we do get several Pit Fighters next turn, this could be very, very bad for us. Alright, so that pit fighter is gone, and I do believe we only got one reinforcement. Yes, we did. Only one. So it's one per turn, but they will there will always end up being three pit fighters if there if there's a lack on any of them. So for the time being, we're we're totally fine. Because even though that sword master that just joined the fray is mighty strong, we can deal with him. What's the meaning of this? The girl wields the Shadow Sword, yet she struggles to finish the job. Hmm. The blade does not appear to rule over her completely. That's absurd. As if a mere child could. Could. The memories of her mother make her falter and hesitate. Her emotions dull the sword's strength. The same as running its edge across stone. She's like a caged animal, desperately throwing herself against her binds. Or have you not even noticed her tears, you imbecile? Yeah, so we're pretty well okay. Um, we can take out this guy with Matcha. Very nice. Um, we definitely wanted our units in the back dealing with the units up front as best as possible. Um, and then we'll just put you here. We will open this door with Lithus. Awesome that he got that movement star. Didn't need it, but it was very awesome nonetheless. Nana, you're safe! Lord, Lord Leaf, please, you have to help Avel. I don't know how much more she can take of this. Leave it to us, but stay behind, Nana. Commander, are you alright? Little Lord, everyone. <laughs> Good to see you all made it. I can't begin to thank you for protecting Nana in this ghastly place. Would that I could have done that the same for my own kin. No, what's happened to Marita? How, how did you escape from the dungeon? Men, seize them. No, wait. Kill them. Kill all of them. If that whelp gets free of the castle, it'll be my head. 
All hands enter the arena and stain the ground with their blood. Panicking already, Radric? Fear not. I'll clean up your mess for you. <laughs> what? What? God's birth. Your spellcraft is truly a sight to behold, your eminence. Not even the wildest fable could compare to this. <laughs> and now, I have the perfect statue of the proud warrior Fianna, an eternal monument to the price of defiance. <laughs> We've nothing to fear now. There's no escaping, or er, there's no rescuing a block of stone. Now kill them all. Don't let any of them get away. And that was our final little bit of a cutscene in this chapter. Very cool, too, in my humble opinion. So... Veld and Raedric are two of the big bads in this game. That's why I did want to show their stats, because you can actually fully check them right now. For instance, you can even check Avel, and she is currently turned to stone, which turns all of her combat of stats, except for luck and constitution, to zero, and she cannot do anything, cannot move. She's done. She's gone. Literally, you lose Avel. This is, this is the last chapter you can use her whatsoever. Um, this Avel, or this Pit Fighter, yeah, he's got a, he's a Swordsmaster with a Killing Edge. Now, he doesn't have a follow-up critical modifier, so you don't have to worry about him crit criticaling on the second hit, but he can absolutely critical with that 43 crit on the first. Again, remember the mechanics of this game. He actually has his first crit capped at 25. That's just how all first hits are, are counted as. He does have a depth, however, which is kind of wild so he does have a pretty decent chance to adapt and crit you now one of the reasons why i rescued asbel with leaf was because what's cool is i can actually i can actually take asbel with leaf and um take him all the way from literally right where he was all the way up here just by opening the door it's really awesome, and as long as your Leaf or your Asbel have more constitution than the other, you can do this. You can rescue the other. Um, it's pretty phenomenal, and uh, something I like doing. Alright, so we'll move up our units. Um, let's, let's keep on the Steel Sword for the time being. And let's keep right here. We're going to... Uh, well, that's actually kind of interesting. I kind of don't want Leaf to be attacked. So we're going to... Alright, so we can move here. We're going to drop Asbel right there. And we're also going to heal up Leaf with Nana. This is the reason why I did not heal up Leaf with the Light Brand earlier. Would have been, honestly, in my opinion, a waste anyhow. I mean, we missed, but it doesn't matter, because Nana's still getting her experience points. Speaking of Nana getting her experience points, we have a new unit to, sp to speak about. Nana, she's a troubadour, which means she's a mounted sword and staff user, which is phenomenal. Mounted sword and staff user? P please bring it on. Now, she's got a follow-up critical modifier of 1, but she's not really a crit machine. I like saying that. She's not built to perform criticals. She's a little bit different when it comes to combat. She comes with her very own preferential sword, the Earth Sword, which has 80 hit, 12 might, 0 crit, 1 2 range, 9 weight weapon, cast potent light magic at range, and drains targets HP. The damage you deal with this weapon is the damage you heal with this weapon. 
So she is basically a Nosferatu tank, as most people would be more inclined of understanding in current Fire Emblem. Now, she has pretty good growths. Some of them are a little bit low, but pretty good for the most part. You can substitute them with scrolls in this game. 50% HP, 25% strength, 10% magic, 40% skill, 35% speed, 55% luck, 15% defense, 10% con, and 1% movement. She is one of my all-time favorite units to use, and part of that has to do with the Earth Sword. The Earth Sword is something that is only hers. Now, she comes with a bit bad weapon ranks for, for staves, I would say. Now, she has no Vigor Star, and she has 5 movement because she's getting the minus 3 from being dismounted. However, she's got the coveted C rank in Swords, which is awesome, so that's that means she's perfectly viable for the rest of this game with whatever swords you want that are good for combat, but honest to goodness, she could come with e rank and swords and it wouldn't matter to me. Because the Earth Sword is that good. She has an e rank plus 30 in staves. I'm glad it's not just a flat e rank, but... I don't at all believe that she gets a bonus to her staff rank upon promotion. And if that's the case, not entirely remembering here, if that's the case, it's a very hard uphill battle getting her to A rank in staves. You're probably never going to see it on her. Like, I don't think I've ever really particularly gotten her beyond maybe C rank. Maybe up to B rank, maybe but I, I really and sincerely doubt it. Now, she comes with her very own skill, which is Charm. It gives plus 10 hit and avoid to all allies within three tiles of the user. So, interestingly enough, um, she actually gives a support to Leaf. She is one of the very few characters who supports Leaf. She gives a 10 support, and it is mutual. So... They are both receiving 10 hit, avoid, crit, and dodge from one another. However, he's actually receiving 20 hit and 20 avoid because as long as they are within three spaces, her charm skill is active. This is cool because this works for all of our units that are within three spaces. All of them. I love this skill. And only a couple of units in this game have it. So while you have it, you want to take advantage of it. There is something in this game, however... A sword of such that also gives the skill passively while you have it equipped. And I think that's pretty cool that something like that exists. Man, Karen is just crit after crit after crit. Thank you, Karen. Would love to have more strength. Definitely need to give her the, the scrolls, the Sed and the Hazul scroll. I wish I had given her that before this turn. Especially because she's actually KOing here, so she's getting experience points. Doesn't really matter if she doesn't get strength. We will be able to supplement that later on in the game. Good job, Brighton. We're taking out all of these guys slowly but surely. And we're moving forward in this chapter. This chapter is kind of a bit bothersome in the sense that it's long. But it's not really all that bad if you know what you're doing. Especially after the first couple of turns. Really, Karen, come on. That's amazing. I don't think she has a follow-up critical modifier that's anything beyond one, if I'm not mistaken. It, it, it Again, it is kind of really unfortunate that she's not had any... Uh... All right, she, she's very close to C rank and swords. Um, 30% strength growth, and she hasn't gained a single point of strength. That's unfortunate. Yeah, she only has a follow-up critical modifier of one, so that's kind of wild. Um, Swords Masters have seven movement, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're just going to keep out of his way until next turn. Um, hmm. We can tr Ooh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, let's see. One thing we definitely want to do is we want to give over to you the pure water. And we also want to take the scrolls 
and attack this unit. We might not do anything here, but who knows? Karen has been critting this entire chapter, and she did. Awesome. She would have still got experience points for it, so either way. Very nice. Very nice. She doesn't need the said scroll so much, except for the magic. It is nice that she has the buff to her magic growth. She did even get a point of magic right there. Would like the strength, though. She has 40% growth in that. We're going to keep those scrolls on her the rest of this chapter and give her some more KOs because she needs it. Now, the pure water I just gave over to Asbel gives plus 7 magic to the user. Effect decreases by 1 every turn. We're going to be using that to take out several of these units over here. Um, and we do have to be very careful. Let's go ahead and heal up. As long as you're paying attention, capturing, stealing, and, and you know, getting what you need um, in this, in this uh, chapter, you're going to be able to end up with a lot of, like, staves, like a heal staff right here. This bishop right here has a meteor tome and a heal staff. It's good to capture him. Um, this one has a physics staff. Uh, the We have seen one earlier in this game in last chapter, but I didn't really talk about it. So it's a infinite range. Restores 10 HP plus the user's magic to an ally. So the physics staves are quite a bit busted in this game. All the range staves in this game have infinite range. So um, then we've got these two... Loptrians here, a sorcerer and a dark bishop. This guy is literally the class of Veld. He comes with a Jormungandr and a Physic. The Jormungandr is the basic light or dark magic tome in this game. There's no other dark magic tome, I believe, that can attack 1-2 range. It's potent dark magic, poison the target, on hit if used by enemy mages. Very powerful. 14 might, 10 crit, 1 2 range, 70 hits. Pretty good. Um, unfortunately, it weighs 12, so even like. This guy could have 20 speed right now, and he'd still only have 8. Um, we are actually going to try our hardest to capture this guy. Um, other than that, we have other things to get done. So let's go ahead and start doing some of those things. So she can't steal the heal staff. All right, but he can. And we'll go ahead and trade over that heal staff over here. And get ready to open up some doors. Now, this is totally pointless. So we're going to end our turn. Uh, actually, that might be even more pointless than I'm... Yeah. Then I... Well, no, it's okay. I thought he might have been healed by the... The uh, um, physics staff user over there. Sometimes he would be. All right, so we're doing five times two here. That's nice. Very nice, Karen. This is almost like the let's give Karen a whole bunch of experience points episode. And still no strength. Come on. Let's go ahead and use the pure water. Now we are going to go ahead and rescue Karen out of the way. And take and drop her this way and get ready to open up some doors and do what we need done. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Nope, I did not mean to leave this guy here. Hopefully we can finish him off. I meant to actually deal with this guy with Asvel. So that's not good at all. Let's 
How much damage is he doing? 16? Alright, so he is going to double Nana. 17 damage. Alright, 16 times 2. Doing 14 damage. She is doing... I don't think enough. Will he double? Yes, he will double Leaf. Gosh, this is really unfortunate. How about Matua? He will not double Matua. Well, the only thing we can do is hope that he doesn't double Matua. We wouldn't have KO'd here against this guy even if we hit. Oh, a 99 miss? Let's uh let's try that again, shall we? All right, and the phase. Wow, that was a very dangerous moment there. All right, cool. We got a weapon level up with Matcha. And Asbel is just going to go to town on these guys and destroy all of them. Which is pretty cool. Uh, we kind of want to make sure that all of the uh, boss's units are killed as soon as possible. Because as Bell has ranged attacks, he's pretty well the best suited for that. So we're going to move up just a couple. Um, we are going to open this door here. And we are also going to mount... Rescue again. Take and drop. Alright, so... Now, if we can actually hit with both of our units, we will finish this guy off. Very nice. And a fantastic level up for Nana. Almost every single stat. She's only she only lacked in what strength in that level up? Strength and magic. Alright, so Leaf is a level eight. We kinda don't want him to be too much higher level than this. Let's hope we don't have another 99 miss. And it was a crit. Leaf was having none of that. That could have actually turned out very bad. We could have lost Matcha there. Well, technically, I don't know if she would actually have died there. Um, she had 23 health. 16 times 2, that's 32. Yeah, she would have died. She would have died. Very dangerous. All right, let's continue moving on. Yeah, one of those guys was bound to attack Finn or Fergus because he was in the way, but it's okay. We're going to get the boss out of the way and a couple other archers, so it, 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 it should be fine. Now, the only reason why I'm using Fire here is because of the fact that I don't want to use Graph Caliber. Thunder is not really necessary. He should be two-hit KOing these guys if he actually hits. And this guy has boss theme, but he has no quote. Very, very interesting uh, unit here. Lots of character growth.
All right, so in this turn, we are going to be giving over the chest key to Fergus, and then we're going to have him move. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we want him to get a chest that's out here, and he's the only mounted unit we have with movement stars, so he has a chance of moving again. That would be very nice if he did. All right, so... Let's move up Leaf. Uh, let's see if Nana can actually heal this time. This is, what, the third or fourth time she's attempted to heal him? Yeah, the missing of staves is useful for experience points later on in the game, but it's not really all that fun <laughs> earlier in the game when you, when you need the hits. Absolutely need them. Okay, so we have... Just a bit to deal with. Brighton, Matcha. Doesn't really matter who we KO this guy with, but... Well, it kind of does matter, because she's not even doing it. He will do it, though. Alright, very nice, Brighton. Brighton grows to be quite a strong unit. And we can use the Slim Sword here. Finally, some strength. Very nice. Only, like five or six more levels of that, and you'll be decently on par with everybody else on my team. All right. Blast him with some fire. And Asbel gets maybe his final level. Well, no, he might get some more experience points this chapter. Um, yeah. So, looks like Asbel is the only one in range of that uh, bow unit there. So that's pretty good. And that's it for our turn. We are absolutely going to need to heal him up as well. And he didn't even bother attacking Karen, probably because, yeah, he doesn't even have remotely close enough magic to do any kind of damage. So we do have to be careful of the Meteor with some of our less resistive units. But I think we are going to go ahead and cut this episode short here. Yes, this is going to be a long one, dealing with Chapter 5, Mother and Daughter. However, this chapter is pretty darn large. It's one of the bigger ones, especially in the early game. Most of the chapters that we're going to be fighting after this are pretty darn short. So with that being said, I want to thank you for joining me. If you like my content, please upvote and follow, or like and subscribe depending on your platform. And while you're at it, have a great and glorious day gaming.